Hi, thanks for joining me today. I've got a problem from the Lithuania team selection test from 2014. Uh, we have a subset of the integers a, which has the property that any six elements in a sum to a number that isn't a multiple of six. We want to prove that the magnitude of a, or the cardinality of a, the size of a, uh, is less than or equal to 10. Do have a go at this problem, but I'm gonna dive straight into a solution. To start our proof, we're going to first prove a lemma. This lemma says that any set of five integers has a subset of size three whose sum is a multiple of three. So in other words, if you give me any five integers, there will be a subset of those five uh, and a subset being of size three and the sum of those numbers in that subset sums to a multiple of three. Uh, how can we prove this? It's not really that difficult a proof. It's a bit of casework. So firstly, uh, we're going to consider the numbers in uh, this set, let's just call it x, and uh, let's just call it x1 up to x5. These are going to be our five integers, and what we're going to do is consider each of these numbers mod 5. Now, if there are three numbers in this set which have the same, sorry, not mod 5, mod 3. If we have three numbers in this set which have the same uh, value, mod 3, uh, well, what I can do is just add them up, and I'll get, let's say it's just x1, Oops, plus x2 and x3. Imagine they're all the same mod 3, and that's just going to be the same as uh, 3 lots of x1, which will just be 0 mod 3. And so that would be those three numbers there I could take as my subset, and that would sum to a multiple of 3. Okay, cool. So that's if we have three numbers uh, in here with the same remainder mod 3. What if we don't? Well, if we don't, well, because there's five numbers here, then we must have one from each remainder class, so 0, 1, 2. Why is that? Well, if we don't have uh, any three of these having the same remainder, that means we can have at most two numbers which have remainder 0, at most two numbers which have remainder 1, but that only gives us four potential numbers, and so therefore we must have a number in there which is remainder 2. And I can apply that argument to prove that there's at least one number with remainder 0, and one number with remainder one. Let's just call them xi, xj, and xk. Oops. And then I'll add them up, and in some order that will be zero plus one plus two mod three, and that's just zero mod three. And so then that would be my subset. And that proves my lemma here that if I take any five integers, there will be a subset of, or guaranteed subset of size three whose sum is a multiple of three. Okay, so going back to the original problem here with the set A, what we're going to do is prove this by contradiction. So we're going to assume for contradiction that A has at least 11 elements. Uh, what I'm going to do is just label the elements A1, A2, all the way up to AN. Let's say we're assuming that N is at least 11. Uh, and what we're going to do is take the first five elements, so A1 up to A5, and we're going to apply this lemma on those five elements. And then that tells us that there's got to be a subset of those five. So we've got A1 up to A5. There's a subset of this guy uh, of size three whose sum is a multiple of three. Uh, without loss of generality, let's just assume that those elements are A1, A2, and A3. It doesn't really matter. We'll just assume it's these guys. Okay, cool. So this this is a set whose sum uh, is a sum of size th of, of a multiple of three. So, so A1 plus A2 plus A3 is a multiple of three. Then what I'm going to do is apply the lemma again, but on the next five elements, so A4 up to A8. So again, that's another five elements in our set. We can apply this lemma, and there's going to be three of these guys whose sum adds up to a multiple of three. And again, it doesn't really matter which ones they are. So without loss of generality, let's assume it's A4, A5, and A6. Cool. And here's the beauty of assuming N is at least 11. Well, we can squeeze out another five elements from this, so we can go A7 up to a11 and here's a, sub, a set of five integers here and um, we have we again we can apply this a lemma so without loss of generality let's assume a7 a8 and a9 sums to a multiple of three okay cool so we've got three sets here each of size three uh, whose sum is a multiple of three and you can probably guess what we're going to do here we're probably going to just combine two of these which is going to make a set of size 6, and um, hopefully then that will also be a multiple of 6, which will contradict this property that A is supposed to have. Um, so how do we do this? Well, we know that each of these sums to a multiple of 3, and that multiple of 3 can either be an odd multiple of 3 or an even multiple of 3, and we don't know which. 
Uh, let's just say this sums to an odd multiple of 3, this one even, this one odd. Then what we would do is we'd group together these two guys, and then that would construct a set, a subset of A of size 6, whose sum is a multiple of 3, because obviously these are each multiples of 3, so when I add them up, it's still going to be a multiple of 3, but it's going to be an odd number plus an odd number, so even as well. So it will be an even multiple of 3, and hence be a multiple of 6, contradicting that property. Um, so that would be an example of what we would do there. What if this wasn't odd, odd, or odd, even odd? What if we had all three odd? Well, we could do the same thing. If all of them were odd, and I just picked two of them, it doesn't really matter which, and I get the same thing here. Uh, what if I have odd and two evens? Well, then I just choose the two even guys, because those, those individually will already be multiples of six, because they're multiples of three and even. And so adding them up still keeps it as a multiple of six. And if they were all even, again, I could just choose any two. It doesn't really matter. And that proves that there will always be a subset of size six uh, whose sum is a multiple of six if n is at least 11. And therefore, n is at most 10. And that solves our problem. Well, that proves this this uh, this this property here. It can only work if the the number of elements in A is less than or equal to 10. I'd encourage you to have a think. Can you find a set A which has 10 elements? So let me know in the comments down below. I'll be intrigued to see your solutions. Thanks as always for watching. If you have enjoyed this, please do give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. Let me know in the comments what problems you'd like for me to see that ah, you'd like for me to solve next. Thanks so much for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Have a great day.